as humans, we long to be loved. So we naturally form relationships. And while we have always wanted that personal connection and care, the way we have gone about searching for it has changed throughout history. How we interact with one another, including how we spend an evening out, says a lot about our culture and our values. Think about how often today, if two people want to get to know each other more, they go to a place where it's almost impossible to have a sustained, in-depth conversation. A movie, a noisy bar, a dimly lit nightclub where hordes of people crowd and sway together. Now, I'm not saying that any of those settings are necessarily bad, but just think, if those are our only form of person-to-person -person interaction, to what extent will we really get to know the person there? Now, some of you might remember the days when going out dancing and dancing with a partner was the social activity on a Friday or a Saturday night. Do you remember the kinds of connections you made with the people you danced with? Nowadays, we're less likely to see the likes of Mary and George Bailey on the dance floor, and more likely to see this. Has something been lost? Mark Rignaris, a sociology professor at the University of Texas at Austin, has done research about the evolution of the dating and marriage markets in America. One thing he's observed are the rapidly declining marriage rates in this country. As you can see in the chart here, in 2014, 52% of 25 to 34-year-old Americans had never been married. Regnerus has also commented that the hashtag MeToo movement shows that women are trying to push back against a pattern of irresponsibility and manipulation. But he's doubtful that the social media movement alone will do much to bring about any real change. In a lecture Regnerus gave here at the University of Notre Dame, someone asked him what more we can do to improve our relationship culture. Here is one key thing Regnerus said in response. People should go out and dance, a non-sexual form of touching, an interaction between the sexes. Today, I would like to show you that we can learn something from partner dances that involve structure, and collaboration. And whether or not you actually like dancing, these examples are helpful for all of us because they reflect and reinforce elements of healthy personal relationships. My first example is 18th century English ballroom dancing. This is what you typically see in Jane Austen movies. At that time, the ballroom was one of the primary places for unrelated men and women to interact. Nowadays, the elements of setting, such as flashy lights, or music, or drinks, are big factors in raiding a social event. But in Austin's time, the central purpose of the ball was for people to get to know each other through a refined and an enjoyable activity. Therefore, the surrounding embellishments of the event did not matter so much as the person-to-person -person experience. The dance provided an avenue for conversation, from the introduction, to the invitation to dance, to the steady pace of the dance itself. Here is a page from John Playford's The Dancing Master, a popular instruction book at the time for studying ballroom dances. As you can see here, the page shows the tune for the given dance, the position of the partners, and the instructions for each step. Because of the amount of study that these dances required, knowing them indicated a character of diligence and refinement. It therefore raised the tone of interaction. Now, let's admit, this particular kind of dance would probably not fit into our culture today. But it does reveal the value of structure in social interactions in order to create an encounter of interpersonal conversation and relationship our emotions can sometimes advance more rapidly than our rational thoughts. So especially in an environment where there's potential for romantic interest, 
a sense of structure gives men and women extra support in developing tender feelings in a healthy way. This is precisely the reason why the classic date is so helpful in building meaningful relationships. The invitation, the set time, and the planned activity provide a framework for two people to have a conversation and allow interest to develop organically. My second example is the waltz, which arose in the 18th century and had taken over Europe and America by the 19th century. The structure of the waltz shares some qualities with 18th century English ballroom dancing. It entails a courteous invitation and a series of steps that requires study, as you can see here from another dance instruction book. But the unique quality of waltz was its emphasis on commitment and unity. When a gentleman would ask a lady for the honor of dancing with her, he would dance with just her, not a network of partners who would weave in and out of each other, as was the case in the English ballroom. And once the partners had committed to each other, they had to move in unison in order to execute the elegant movement. This dance reminds us that the beautiful spectacle of human relationship does not happen automatically. It requires skill, dedication, and mutual effort. It reminds us that when building relationships becomes difficult, we should not immediately give up. Philip Halfaker writes in his book, Genuine Friendship. Friends nearly always start out as people who happen to be in each other's lives. But something happens that enables the companionship to become a friendship. Namely, along with the mutual interest they take in each other, they willingly commit themselves to each other in some real way. When it comes to friendships as well as romantic relationships, we must remember that these bonds take time and practice to build. Now, this does not mean that we cannot drop a bad relationship, but it does mean that we should not just settle for short-term superficial relationships. They won't satisfy us. My final example is swing dancing. Swing was born in 20th century America, and some of its signature qualities were diversity and freedom. It emphasized diversity because it brought together groups of various socioeconomic, racial, and cultural backgrounds. Anyone could swing dance. And it emphasized freedom because although swing required study of the basic step, it also left a lot of room for improvisation and personal flair. In swing, there's an interplay between the lead, who's usually the man, and the follow, who's usually the woman. This photograph shows a typical move called the swing out, in which the lead gently pushes the follow, who responds with a turn, and an optional little kick, as you can see here in the picture. That move is just one example of the communication and teamwork that this dance requires. Each partner has a unique role, and each relies on the other to carry out any step, from a simple spin to a dramatic dip. That element of communication with complementarity encourages relationships in which people bring their unique talents to the interaction, listen to each other, and respond to each other. In swing dance, if both the lead and the follow tried to spin each other at the same time, the dance would not be able to continue. In the same way, we should not be afraid to let our relationships involve some give and take. It takes one person to initiate an invitation so that the other can respond. Their different yet equally valuable actions complement each other. And at the same time, both people can bring their personalities and incorporate them into moving the relationship forward. That interaction creates a sense of teamwork, freedom, and fun. Recognizing the beauty and power of compatible differences within swing dance can help us within relationships such that we can work together to create something that we could not have created alone. Ruth St. Dennis, a modern dancer of the 20th century, once said, I see dance being used as communication between body and soul to express what is too deep to find for words. 
Partner dancing is one kind of structured interaction that enables two people to communicate with each other and to become acquainted with each other as humans. In that way, it becomes much more than just two bodies moving together. After all, if our interactions are just about external beauty, physical touch, or exciting ambiance, they will leave us wanting, since those feed only one dimension of our humanity. But interactions that involve more structure, commitment, and teamwork add more layers to the encounter. They enable conversation and help us to reveal our personalities to each other. So practicing partner dances like these is a great opportunity for building comprehensive personal connections. But regardless of the activity you choose, these dances can teach us the elements of healthy human bonding. In one way or another, they can help us form relationships that are filled with respect, with fun, and with love. Thank you.